I'm on the phone with Kevin Lee, CEO at Did It, a search social display, video, and content marketing organization based out of New York City area. Good afternoon, your time, Kevin, and thanks for agreeing to the call. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. You betcha. You've been a web professional for a number of years, um, many years, actually, uh, specializing in the topics that I mentioned, and I have a few questions for you. Great. Yeah, it's been uh, 17 years since I started Did It, and I started doing digital media two or three years before that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Actually, we're celebrating our 17th year, too, so I think I may have bumped into you. Um, New York City, the Internet world, let's see, was it 96 or 90? Seven, they had a big one there. Gee. Sure, yeah, I remember Penton uh, used to run. Yeah, yeah. Yep. exactly. Those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> wow, we've come a long way, haven't we? Absolutely. Um, good for you. Uh, so listen, you know, you know, my uh, goal is to share with the subscribers of this podcast a look into the future, uh, web professional trends uh, for 2014, and uh I'm curious to know, what, what do you see coming down the pike? Uh, well, you know, there are a lot of different things going on uh, in parallel right now. Um, you know, what's fascinating is uh, suddenly content marketing has become vogue. Uh, obviously, for those of us who grew up in the world of SEO, uh, we always knew that content was king uh, and, you know, context was queen. And, and it, having the right content out there was always critically important. What I think has changed or continues to change um, now with regards to a lot of people's content marketing strategies and this sort of resurgence in interest in content uh, is that the sort of channels of deployment or distribution of content are evolving. So it used to be that content was being created to exist only on a person's website, uh, often for the serendipitous visitor or potentially for SEO purposes. But uh, we see a lot more uh, of a trend towards cross-utilization of content. And I think the next couple of years we'll see an escalation of that as well. So, for example, when video is created, uh, videos not just put up on the site and put up on YouTube, but it's heavily promoted through social media channels. Uh, often it gets repurposed in various ways. Uh, you know, cut into various different lengths and edited together. Um, and similarly, when you create textual content, uh, often that content doesn't live just on the individual marketer's website anymore. Uh, it makes its way out and is syndicated across social media. It ends up in the blogosphere uh, in different ways. And I think it requires sort of a rethinking of one's strategy uh, and the way one thinks about content and the creativity of content creation. Yeah, those are solid trends. I, I agree 100%, and I'm seeing the same thing. Let's talk about context for a minute. Could you drill in? Could you give us an example of what context means in that regard? Well, for example, um, when if I were to write a brilliant article about something and I were to just put it on my own blog, uh, it may be discovered through my own marketing efforts or you know, if I was lucky enough to get good ranking in SEO. But when that same or a similarly titled article were to be published uh, on ClickZ or the eMarketing Association blog or um, on your site for that matter, the individuals reading that article are now reading it in a different context. And that, that change of context often changes the, um, the way in which that content uh, ends up influencing the, the individual for example, it's just sometimes as simple as the halo effect that one gets whenever the content is published on an industry trade publication in comparison to a company's own blog. And that's true for all the various industries that one might think about, uh, as well as getting op-ed pieces into um, you know, traditional media. You know, having that very similar content be in a different context changes the way that people perceive it. Uh, they they tend to ascribe uh, a different level of authority to the content based on its context. So it's it, it's worth thinking about. You know how can one leverage um, partners? How can one leverage a broader ecosystem 
of uh, to distribute content where one might get a double benefit you get the halo effect of potentially an industry trade publication, for example, or a traditional media um, distribution. But you also get um, the fact that that particular piece of content may rank better in SEO if it were hosted elsewhere than it were on your own site. This is particularly true for businesses where their own domain name has not been around that long or has never been heavily um, SEO'd before. And so you may be better off actually putting that content or focusing a lot of that content external to your own site. Yeah, I get it, and that's insightful. I appreciate that. Great explanation. So let's talk about the job landscape then. So, you know, obviously uh, if you've been in, in the space for a while, either a SEO expert or a webmaster, if you will, you, you've known for some time that content is king, right? And so, you know, having said that, what does this, what is this new trend uh, have? A, how does this new trend affect the job market? For example, are are we talking about technology workers becoming now content experts? Are we talking about a whole new entrance into the marketplace from traditional writers, authors, publishers, uh, or have they always been there? I, I think they've always been there. I mean, uh, you look at some of the folks, uh, the, the, the SEO community has always been an extremely eclectic and diverse community uh, from extremely geeky, you know, folks with computer science backgrounds or other hard science backgrounds such as physics um, all, all the way to, to more liberal arts type folks who had great training and skill sets with regards to storytelling and the ability to make sure that uh, that, that content really resonated with the audience. And, uh, you know, sometimes that existed in the same individual, which was perhaps a little bit more rare. Uh, you know, what's interesting about this, this uh, refocusing of content is it, it sort of paints a, a rosier picture for some of the uh, liberal arts skill sets that you know might have been a little bit um, uh, on the decline you know certainly journalists uh, are not going to be typically uh, working in a, the same kind of a journalistic storytelling environment that they had in the past but content is still critically important and in particular with the uh, ubiquity of high bandwidth connectivity even within the smartphone um, and tablet you know, video content and the ability to produce interesting and engaging video is is a, a skill that you know is in the forefront now. You know, in the meantime, on the the advertising side of things, you actually have sort of the opposite going on, where uh, the ability to run a really great campaign across different forms of paid media, paid search, paid social, um, display media, video, etc., um, requires greater quantitative skills than ever before. So you sort of have these, this requirement that a great you know, marketing team have both a, a great creative strategy and great creative execution, but also uh, if they're engaging in any paid media or, or holistic paid media plan, the ability to understand fairly complex quantitative concepts like uh, attribution, um, marketing mix modeling, uh, perhaps even um, econometrics. And so it's, it's fascinating to watch those things happen at the same time. Yeah, fascinating indeed. And I appreciate you expanding on that because um, this is a topic of, of strong interest to webprofessionals.org. We've been advocating on behalf of the job market that goes beyond just computer science and the artistic, you know, the design and the creative oriented. Jobs are real. They're here now and, and therefore a host of skill sets, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and uh, it, you know, you really can't rely that heavily on um, just buzzwords on a resume or buzzwords on a LinkedIn profile anymore. Um, you know, for example, uh, for many of the positions that, that, you know, my HR department puts up there, uh, I request uh, email interviews because if the person can't communicate well via the written form in an email, even if they're a coder, um, you know, back and forth communications happens via, uh, you know, instant chat, via email, and you need to make sure that that individual has the ability to communicate um, in, a, in a cogent way via that, that kind of a mode of communications. It's not even just 
purely an in-person interview process anymore. Very good point. Well, Kevin, we certainly appreciate all that you uh, do, have done in the web profession for web professionals, your expertise and insight, uh, and most funnily for your time today. Oh, thanks so much.